Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Just want to run through again um, some of the most important information about your injectors and your engine. This is not only 1KD specific, but look, let's talk fairly specific to 1KDs, but you're going to have similar information regarding any of the other common rail diesel engines and their injection systems, similar. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of confusion still where people are unsure about when to replace their injectors and diagnostics and what they should and shouldn't be checking. So I'm gonna kind of run through the whole thing a little bit and all the reasons. It's not just about injectors, about the, the seats and stuff like that and when they leak and the problems they cause. So we'll just try and go through slowly when to replace these suckers, right? So that's your common rail injector. Um, one of the biggest issues is uh, generally what can last, look at luck, they last these seats, right? Bring those seats into the picture. They last about as long as the injectors do, right? Around about, right? So there's been some changes to those over the years. There's different types and brands and materials and all that. None of that really matters. I mean, obviously, excluding the brass. As long as they're copper seats, genuine seats, um, they're going to last about as long as the injectors do. So they're two things that go hand in hand. Now we give a guide of the seven year 170,000 K thing. Um, they've done a lot of work at 170,000 Ks in seven years. The injectors have been improved over and over. So the seats were improved from being copper to have this coating over the top, which helps them last a little bit longer, but it doesn't make them bulletproof or last forever. So let's move those out of the way a little bit. All right, so understand that on based on averages, they last usually from factory they usually last over 200,000 k's okay but we have seen them leaking or about to leak as low as the high 130s and 140s okay when they've done shorter trips or lots of towing seem to be the the factors there now so you want to get those out by toyota the by the standard service book workshop manual the service every 40,000 requires checking valve clearances and to do the procedure correctly requires removing these injectors pulling them out and checking the valve clearances therefore you would then replace that seating washer that's what these are in case you're trying to cover this for people that have not seen a video before but also people that have been watching the videos for years or inf information for years and the videos over the last year or two so please bear with me trying to cater for everyone now it's really important that you watch the videos till the end because there's always more, you know, maybe I'm going on a bit like now, but there's more information and it all comes out in the end and important things that you may miss. The other important thing is that you search the channel for information you want to know. So search injectors or injector seats, blow by, whatever you want to know about, search the channel. If we haven't got a video, we'll try and, and do one and get all those areas covered. So awesome vehicles the main area here the misunderstanding of how these seats leak and how long the injectors last so i've already mentioned it seven years 170 right we've got to talk about diagnostics too because a lot of people want to rely on diagnostics and that's kind of not working out okay so the seats get changed every 40,000. however we don't like pulling the injectors every 40,000. it's quite a lot of labor it's a risk a contamination risk to your fuel system okay so if that's happened every 40,000 k's there's a good chance dirt and debris have got down here in this inlet um, possibly these seats we've seen these reused before we've seen ports not cleaned before we've seen it all you know we could probably just pick a random seat off the top of that bucket there there it is you can see those specks of black stuff there that's where the seats being used and not clean this one here that's what it should look like so you've got that clean seating area so there's your comparison so it's really important this job gets done right. That's is, this is what we specialise in, and we also specialise in trying to find other people around the country that can do the job right, nice and clean, you know. That's not the only part that's got to be clean. There's plenty of people that can do it. We've just got to find them. So please put your hand up and let me know if you think you're one of those people. Now, the other issue is obviously injectors. You can get other brands. You can get remanufactured. Um, each to their own what they want to do. We personally only believe in brand new genuine fresh stock Denso injectors, right? Not this. This is this is a remanufactured to be honest um, There's ways to pick those out, but that's probably in another video. Okay, so watch those Now the problem with injectors are so some of the older ones the the nozzle needle kind of look like that didn't have any DLC coating 
and then they change it. I'm just going through a bucket here. There's different, there's different nozzle needles and whatever for different injectors. So these are slightly different. We'll keep going through, grab a couple more. There might be some different ones. A lot of these ones keep coming up. You can see they're DLC coded and that's great. So they do last and work a bit longer. Um, that's just one part of the injector that wears. And then you've of course got the, the solenoid valves. They also can cause some issues. There's some non-DLC coded ones. And of course that's why the later ones are DLC coded. Now the DLC, it's a lot harder material and it's got less friction. So everything works better for longer to put it simple, okay? And the other one of the key parts that we see a lot of wear on is these command pistons, as I said. These ones are not coded. We'll just push all this out the way a little bit. This one's coded. Now don't be, some people are a bit confused. When I see DLC coded, I didn't say Bailey's DLC, right? Okay, now that that's been brought up, let's just say, again, the best way to go is only brand new genuine Denso injectors, what we, we recommend, okay? So these are your standard old command pistons that are worn. Any vehicle with these sort of injectors, I'm not interested in diagnostics and wasting time on it. They should be changed by now. I've said it before, any vehicle with an 0, 05, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, probably up to 2011 at this stage, should have new injectors. They should be replaced. That's where the time comes from. The time comes from averages. See, we have a look at the internals of a lot of these injectors. The replacements we supply for those 150 Pratos, say in 2009, 10, 11, that weren't DLC, are full DLC. That's what this is, right? So it's a DLC coating, as explained. Less friction and it's harder, so it lasts, it works better for longer. Now, we've got a whole heap of those and they work really well, okay? Um, what I want to say about the diagnostic side of it is with the older vehicles, 05, 6, 7, 8, 9 so let's say the earlier Hiluxes, the 120 Pratos and all the Hiluxes up till around about September 09 you could rely on diagnostics now I'll, what I'm saying is when I say could, that's when they're old you do diagnostic and you go oh yeah, you know, now it's time to replace them it's at that point now I'm not interested, they should all be replaced, I can tell you they're not working right, okay? Um, once you've replaced them, on those older vehicles, 05, 6, 7, 8, 9, up until September, you can continue your diagnostic, and you will find that, you know, at about 140, 50, 60, 70, or 200, or 120, or whatever thereabouts, it's, a, it's an average, it's a guide. It depends how you use the vehicle, how long they're gonna last. They've done a lot of work, if you stop and think about what's going on with all these moving parts and the fuel pressure. They've done a lot of work. So it's best to keep it running clean, efficient, responsive, um, and the combustion's right. Because after all, wrong combustion is what causes cracked pistons. We know that. There's some other causes, you know, the more power, you know, remats, chips, tunes. More power means more, more torque means more force on the piston, bigger bang, more force on the piston. The pistons are cracking straight over, right? So. Butter boom, butter bing. It's a small diesel engine. We've been through that as well. Please watch the other videos. There's a whole heap of info there. People are a bit confused. You know, they're talking, oh, I've got an 08. And looking at the diagnostic, the guy says it looks okay still. It's not okay. They're 11 years old. The command pistons, they're absolutely worn and trashed. You know, I'll grab a few more out, right? I don't know if you can see that. I've shown you in other videos. Some people are going, yeah, we've seen all this before, right? Please understand. There's not going to be a difference. There's not going to be one that, okay, magically, this one's okay, okay? They're all worn. It's a bit like a set of tires, okay? If you say I've got a set of BFGs, they've done 100,000 Ks on my Prado. I, I know roughly what they're going to look like, okay? So it's not like they're going to have 90% tread or anything like that, you know? We, you, we get to know. We see a lot of them, and you just go, yeah, basically, you know what they're going to look like, right? So all the old ones need to be replaced and you can generally rely on diagnostics. Now, from those September 09 onwards, so the 150 Prado onwards and the Hilux is in the same vintage, this is the important part, right? You've got to be really careful with the diagnostic. This is what I've found, okay? Now, this whole cold start thing, it's almost forget it. I don't mind if you do a cold start. Those feedback values, one, two, three, four there, just the individual feedback values. Small part of the picture, as I've said before, they can be higher when they're cold, sometimes they're higher, low. they're all over the place, right? So you can look at those. They certainly shouldn't go too high when they're cold, okay? I'm not gonna give you a number because it's confusing. There's different models that do different things. The important one we're gonna talk about is that 150 Prado, so September 09 onwards. 
a new vehicle or a vehicle with new injectors on a cold start, the individual feedback values can fluctuate quite high. Uh, we've seen a lot of that. And we're reluctant to change injectors prematurely. Like, you know, if someone sees that on a new car or they've just had their injectors done or it's done 40 or 80,000 Ks, what's going on here? It's gone up to 2.7 forget about it long as it comes down it's happy when it's warm it's not blowing smoke it's quiet like i said it's not just about diagnostic you've got to look if it's blowing smoke right and you've got to have a listen to it does it sound right and the software is really good at keeping them quiet so i wouldn't rely too much on waiting for them to get noisy on those vehicles on the older ones the 120s you could get the noise a bit you could hear it and go oh yeah you know between you know the command piston's not working right you know this is jamming it's not working right um so Diagnostics, kind of don't rely on it. So you're gonna see some fluctuations as they warm up. Every other reading that's more important to me, like the injection volume, the load, the main injection period, they're the three main ones I wanna look at. They're all gonna be out when they're cold. So you can't look at it cold. You only wanna see when it's full temperature. So that's the first part of it. The next part is, they, I'll say never, I don't mean never, but they never, they really go out, okay? So even when injectors aren't working right, wrong combustion, blowing smoke, might be a bit noisy, not doing what it's meant to do, it's done 200,000 Ks, oh, but the diagnostic says everything looks okay. I know, don't rely on it, because we've seen the internals and injectors that have done half the Ks, the wear on those, and at 150 and 170 and 190, they are worn, they're trashed, they're not working well, you've got an upgrade to brand new full DLCs they work better for longer, okay? Now, initially, we've seen vehicles with those full DLCs around 300,000 Ks and still working really well. Diagnostics looking okay, but they just start to get a little bit noisy and it seems to be the nozzle needles getting a little bit worn through. Look, you can leave them there if you like. Um, I'm not fussed, you know. It's one way to find out if people don't change them, the ones that go, well, we'll just see what happens. That's fine, but if you want to keep it running clean and efficient, you know, time to replace them is based on averages. That one, you know, look, you might get a bit more Ks out in 200, 250. If you're doing highway K, sort of, you, let's say you're doing 60,000 Ks a year. In five years, you're going to have done 300,000 Ks. Bada boom, bada bing. They might be still okay then. So you can do your diagnostic and everything's going to look okay. But, you can also have them at 30, 50 or 80,000 Ks after five years and they may or may not look okay. So it, there's a whole lot of variables there. It's kind of hard to explain. The key thing I want to say is don't rely on diagnostics, right? Because they could be looking good to the end. Now, every now and then you'll get one that goes out. If you've got a big problem, um, you'll see something going on with those readings, but not always. Um, you can have quite often we see problems that aren't, it's not on the diagnostic, okay? So that's what I'm trying to say. We see injectors that have got problems, they're not working right, and obviously replacing the injectors, all of a sudden they're quiet, they get better fuel economy, and they're not blowing smoke, but the readings were okay before. So it's kind of like, don't rely on diagnostic on those later ones, I guess what I'm trying to say, we're trying to keep it simple. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say to be honest. Um, there's a lot of confusion. People still doing diagnostics on vehicles that we know the readings are not going to go out. And then also the other way, at 30 or 50 or all these under 100,000 K vehicles that, oh, mine went up to 2.7, you know, whatever. They do that. Be aware they do that. So as long as it comes down to really low numbers once it's warm and everything else is okay, but you're still your safest bets based on averages. Now, as always, you've got to be really careful where you get your stock from because you can get these remanufactured suckers and you can get your... Um, there's a lot of counterfeit parts. So you can see Toyota dealers, they've got it on the counter there. They copy the parts, they copy the boxes. So there's Chinese injectors. We have suppliers contact us um, with, you know, these injectors copies that they tell us are awesome and all that sort of thing. And, of course, we say no thanks. No thanks to all the other brands. No thanks to... There's also, there's different injectors that will work. They will bolt in, they're the same size, they'll plug in, they'll work, but they're not the right injector for this engine, this, that particular engine in Australia, okay? So you gotta be careful, and that's where we are, that's what we're talking about. Now the guys overseas, obviously, 
you've got your own sort of part numbers. There's a few crossovers and updates and things like that that are different. But I'm telling you, here in Australia, there's some sellers that import injectors and they give different part numbers and they'll work, but they don't work quite right. And then we get people contacting us. You know, they've got these weird rattles and noises and we have a listen to it and it's like, yeah, that that's kind of not right. That's not what it should sound like. So unless they've been really unlucky, um, these other numbers, you've just got to use the right part number, okay? And that's what we do. What we supply in our kits is the correct part number, okay? No, maybe there's no, well, we'll try this one. This one's going to save you 300 bucks for the set. So we'll try this one. It'll work. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Yeah, I oh, know it works. So no, none of that. Brand new injectors, pipes, seals and gaskets, all genuine Toyota parts as far as the pipes and gaskets go. Um, Denso make the injectors for Toyota, same, same. Guys, I hope that's been informative. You know the deal. If you've got questions, we've got our Facebook groups there. Um, for all the guys overseas, the most popular one's probably hashtag 1KD Forever Crew. Okay, and we've got all the other engines. 1KZ Forever Crew, 1GR Forever Crew, 1GD Forever Crew. And all the usual groups. I've got a piece of paper. I'll bring it over so you can have a look. There you go. Obviously, you know about the YouTube channel at the bottom there. And there's the other groups. Now, the VIP group, you can't get in. That's a very... It's a special group for special people. Um, you know, it's a loyalty group. So, here you go. Here's your free information. But if you then... I've got to pay the bills too. So, if you support me and buy your injector kit or your water pump Tommy belt kit or your front wheel bearing kits with the Protos and... All the other little bits and pieces of parts we just include and train with those kits right um, you support me i support you kind of thing right so there's all your free information please go ahead and use it if you've got questions you can ask the questions on the facebook groups and that's the reason that works well is because there's a whole heap of other people there that have got the same questions people that have got answers there's people in the trade mechanics business owners DIYs, people that have been there done that, they've done it before, so they can share their experiences and they might get to it before I do. I'll probably get to it eventually. I may miss some. Um, obviously, it's a big it's a big world out there, you know, Australia and then the world and then all these questions and whatever. That's why on the YouTube, feel free to put your comments, you know, positive comments and stuff. Um, let me know if I'm doing the right thing. If you've got some ideas or you like something different, feel free to shoot me a text message. Um, and same deal, you know, any other questions, text is always best if you can shoot me your name and, um, and your questions in a text message. I can't take everyone's call, unfortunately, there's a lot of people, there's only one of me. I've got work to do, I've got to work on cars, source parts, pack parts, supply parts, etc. Bada boom, bada bing, very busy. I'll do everything I can and that's why I've got it structured for it to work. So questions on the Facebook groups, please. Other people can help out. If you want to buy any parts, you do need to give me a call. Feel free to text me your name, vehicle details, kilometres first. That's probably easiest. If you want to buy injectors, we've got a video called Buying Injectors. It's got a bit of general information there. It'll show you some of the parts that are included in the kit. There's probably even more than that. And a rough guide on pricing. It's very rough, obviously. Some are a lot cheaper, um, whatever the case may be. So once again, if you haven't, guys, please subscribe. Um, appreciate your support. Um, coming towards Christmas, I'm sure I'll get to say this again, but Merry Christmas everyone, you know, it's December and everyone's putting the Christmas tree up, it's all Christmassy, so thanks for your support over the year, and I hope we've just recapped on some information just regarding the injectors and um, basically when to replace them. You know, there's no point worrying, we don't want people worrying about them, there's nothing to worry about. It's just like, you don't worry about the car, you change your oil every, whatever you do, you change the air filter, you change, there's a time that comes you've got to change the injectors. It's an average, if you want to see if yours is different to the seven year 170k thing, give me a ring. But that's about, look, if you do, if the car's 10 years old and it's done 90,000 k's, this is what I'm talking about. It's done short trips usually, so those seats, they're not going to be as intact as ones that do longer trips, because the heating and cooling, they move around sort of thing. Um, look, I could just go on all day. Let's call it a day at that. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, I have some more information on you on the next for you on the next video. Diagnostics, don't worry about it. Just change your injectors. One seventy, seven years. Happy days. You can relax. There you go. Happy days. Bada boom, bada bing.